We are going to touch on the Red Wings, and this is a week of reckoning, we think, for that franchise. But we're going to start with the Detroit Tigers. And I said on Friday, Stoney, that I don't care that the Pirates are better. You're the defending American League champs. You get your three top pitchers. Go down there and bury them. And they didn't get it done this week. It has to be incredibly frustrating. Very disappointing. And it was, it was kind of a disappointing week, even though they won two out of three for St. Louis. But to go into Pittsburgh, like you said, and only win one out of three. I mean, the offense, starting pitching has been very good. I mean, come on. They scored 14 runs in six games. You're not going to win many games that way. Your, uh, your aces on the, the batting side, Prince Fielder and Miguel Cabrera, eight for 46 this week. That's not going to get it done. They each had a solo home run. That, that's all. Look, every player goes through slumps. But these guys are, if you go by OPS, they're each 100 points or more, less than they were last year. And so that, that's bad. I mean, they're doing okay, but not what they're being paid to do. They're being paid to do more. And as a team, they're going to tell you, well, we just won four straight series. But you've dug yourself a big enough hole where just winning, you got a sweep series now. Yeah. And now you're in a meat grinder where you're going down to Texas and you're going to Tampa. Yeah. Two places that are incredibly tough to win. Correct. And you go in two games under 500. That's why, in my mind, you, you had to sweep this series in Pittsburgh. That would have been nice. Look, they're, what, they're three games out. So, look, they're definitely in range. They can catch fire. But I thought this team was going to start hitting when it got hot. <laughs> it seems like it's the other way around. I mean, don't, and, and Leland's right. The guys who have really not been doing it, Delman Young, Bosch, Peralta. But now when you add Fielder and Cabrera to the mix who are not doing it consistently, this is what you have. And it's got to be rectified. So, something has to happen. Or Dombrowski really going to have to make some moves. I mean, the White Sox got Kevin Euclid today. And, you know, the Red Sox paid them a little bit to take him, too. You know, yeah. why couldn't, you know, the Tigers do that? Wouldn't you have, rather have Euclid as your designated hitter than Delman Young? Granted, Young in the winning run today, but I'd rather have Euclid. I hear what you're saying, and it's an aggressive move by a team within your own division yeah. that makes you stand up and take notice and say, hey, we've got to make a move here, do something. I mean, seriously, I mean, we, people joke about it. I mean, Quentin Berry, he, I mean, what he did this week, I mean, he had a five for five game, game winning hit against St. Louis in the, in the afternoon game, scored a winning run today. I mean, today went in a home run. I mean, every time they do, he, he's in the lineup, something happens. So, we need to bury that fantasy that he shouldn't be playing. No question. And I think Leland today in his post game basically yeah. said that, you know, Young and Bosch are going to be splitting that DH duty so that Barry can be in there, which makes sense. And we've mm -hmm. talked a little bit about that. Uh, let's hop a little bit into this hockey free agency because a week from today is when the doors officially open. The Wings have a ton of cash to spend with some big names out there to get. And in my mind, I think this is going to be a true test of whether players want to come here. They want to play for Mike Babcock. They trust the Red Wings system. A lot of that old time, old time mystique is out the door. So now it's the new generation. And you bring up a great point because you've heard rumblings. You know, the players might not love Babcock that much. And Red Wing fans were under this, you know, feeling that, ah, oh, we're going to get Suter and Parisi, maybe, or maybe just one of them. I'm not saying they won't, but what the Pittsburgh Penguins did this weekend and trading Jordan Stahl and trading Mikhailik, and they, they, might, they might get rid of somebody else to clear cap room, there is a legitimate possibility that you're talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins being the Miami Heat of the National Hockey League, if you add Parisi and Suter to Crosby and, and Malkin and Latang, and they have a pretty good goalie, Mark Andre Fleury. I mean, so if you're Ken Holland, let me put you on the spot. Yeah. And it comes down to the fact that all right, I'm not going to get both of these guys. Are you going to overextend yourself financially to assure that you do get one of those guys, either Suter or Parisi? Yes, you have to. They have too many holes especially on defense with the loss of Lindstrom and Brad Stewart. So you don't buy into the concept of if you miss those two guys, we're going to stockpile with six, seven guys that are million and a half, two million dollar guys. They might perhaps. not have a choice or they can make some trades. I've heard, you know, Keith Yandel, the Phoenix Coyotes is somebody who's available. But though they hopefully will get one of those two guys. But if they miss, yeah, there are other players out there that they can get. But it certainly won't be something that people are going to go crazy about. Uh, speaking of our winter teams, you know, the NBA draft is coming up. And, you know, everybody's talking about the, the Pistons with uh, John Henson from uh, North, North Carolina. I have a funny feeling, I have no idea why, but Andre Drummond, maybe he'll slip like Monroe and Knight did. That would that, that'd be their dream guy. I hope that happens, but if not, it's, it's basically a crapshoot once again. They need some, I don't want to see another scoring guard or a point guard. No, they need somebody big and physical, somebody who can be a difference maker, at least defensively, who's big. Stonehead of the week, we may be on differing sides in this issue. Go ahead. Well, all right. The Stonehead of the week is, no, not Johnny Peralta. It's Joel Peralta of the Tampa Bay Rays for 
having excessive pine tar in his glove. Now, I don't agree with the way it was found. It was, they found out about it. Davey Johnson, the manager of the Washington Nationals, who they played, I mean, his first base coach uh, coached, you know, Peralta when he was with the Nats and with their farm club, you know, in 2010. So they had inside information. That was Bush. But still, you're a major league player. You know that they know. So why are you having excessive, the umpire didn't even say it was pine tar, it was the excessive, excessive pine, pine tar. tar. For that, you are a stonehead. And I did side on the other one, which you covered. I thought it was Davey Johnson who was a stonehead, because oh. that is a Bush move, I think. I really the do baseball think. has the most unwritten rules of any sport. They certainly do, but I don't think you pull that out of your closet. And I just don't think you Maybe, go you, that you know, in a, in a meaningless, well, not meaningless, but in a interleague game in, in June, maybe not. Now, Sixth game of the World Series, sure. maybe you pull that out. Don't forget, though, what LaRusa did with Leland with Kenny Rogers. Yeah. I mean, that's a very similar situation. Those are two guys who respect each other, and LaRusa basically looked over at Jim and said, hey, get that taken care of. What about 1993 Stanley Cup Finals? Oh, the stick Marty with McSorley. McSorley? Yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of that's you know, right. gamesmanship that goes into that this. That cost so the LA Kings the Stanley Cup. Goes either way. That's Mike Stone, 6 to 10, every Monday to Friday on 97 won the ticket, and, of course, every Sunday here on The Update. Dolan out his stonehead. Thank you, sir. Stony Stonehead of the Week is brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding, the best mortgage bankers. Call 1-800-LOW-RATE.